All right, uh, Facebook friends, this is actually, I think, the first live Facebook video I have ever done. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for looking a little crazy. I think we all look a little crazy in these uh, quarantine times. Um, but I wanted to um, do this video as a follow-up. As many of you know, um, I went absolutely crazy the other day um, when Governor Ned Lamont of Connecticut um, tweeted um, a series of tweets where he essentially said that an infant, the first infant uh, mortality linked to COVID-19 um, happened in the state of Connecticut. I instantly, in the pit of my stomach and in my gut, knew he was lying. Um, and you guys know me, I can be a political firecracker. Um, I, I run a lot on my gut and my instincts, which has really gotten me um, to where I am today, just trusting my gut, trusting my instincts, and then pursuing more information. It was the language that he used um, that let me know that he was lying. He said linked to um, COVID-19, which was very strange language. Um, you would never use that language um, in any other regard. You would say that somebody died from a heart attack. You would say that somebody um, died from cancer um, or lost their battle with cancer, which is a little more politically correct. But you don't say linked to. It's very strange language that um, let me know that this was a form of political doublespeak. Um, I've been in politics long enough now to know that when politicians lie, they lie by omitting facts. That is their methodology behind lying. They, it is always a lie by omission. And I knew that because he said nothing else about the death, that he was essentially lying. And if he was lying, um, this was potentially um, one of the biggest lies that a politician um, has told in recent memory. Um, just so we're clear, it is illegal uh, to go into a movie theater and yell fire because it inspires mass panic and confusion. I do not know how it could possibly be legal for Ned Lamont to do what he did. And I am very seriously um, calling for his resignation and calling for journalists to investigate the following information that I'm going to tell them. Um, first and foremost, I want to tell you why this particular story really grinded my gears um, and why I got so involved in it. Um, you guys know that I am from Connecticut. Um, I have two sisters that just gave birth for the first time in the last three weeks. So I became a first time aunt um, and they obviously um, were heavily pregnant when this entire coronavirus thing broke out and they both gave birth in Connecticut. So this was really um, a lie that was a bad luck lie for Governor Lamont because he couldn't have hit a bigger nerve or a more personal nerve. Um, I know that both of my sisters have been extremely terrified um, of this COVID-19 thing and when both both of them um, discovered this news about the infant death, they understandably freaked out. It has been a, a freaky experience for people that are expecting in this nation um, altogether. Um, when they gave birth, they were not allowed to have any visitors. None of us, I still have not met um, my, nie my, my, my two nephews um, because I can't go see them because there are all of these things in place that are telling pregnant mothers to stay away from people. And because I travel so much, I could potentially be a risk. Um, they could not have any visitors in the hospital. Um, being outside of the hospital, they don't want to leave their house for fear that they might get um, COVID-19 and give it to their children. And they came back to a society that was essentially shut down. Think about what mothers are going through right now, to be mothers and um, you know people that are postnatal. They are going through a lot, a lot emotionally. Your body's already going through a lot emotionally. And then you add this, a pandemic where there's very little information um, being given. We've reached a point in this pandemic, um, which is what I have been trying to communicate to you guys, um, where politicians are now lying um, because they are realizing that the more cases that they have um, in their state, the more money that they can extract from the federal government. It is not a coincidence, before I get into the details of this Connecticut case, I want you to know that it is not um, a coincidence that Illinois and New York and Connecticut and California are the states that are claiming they need the most federal funding. Particularly when you look at New York, you need to do your digging and your research on the health care collapse that they um, were facing before this coronavirus um, um, outbreak. 
Um, Governor Cuomo was having serious budget issues and April 1st was going to be his deadline to figure out where he was going to get the money to sponsor um, these Medicaid programs that were on the brink of collapse. 16 hospitals had shuttered since 2003 because they could no longer afford um, to have these people coming in and not paying. Um, Connecticut, they are facing, if you want to look it up, a pension crisis. Um, they, that the, 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 the state of Connecticut is on the on the brink of bankruptcy. I have been telling my sisters for a while to move out um, because once, uh, because there is a Democrat trifecta and because these Democrats and these senators um, and the governor are lying, they're in a bad situation. Um, so that's the backstory of why I have gotten super, I got super passionate about this particular, what I knew to be was a lie. And I tweeted against it and people kept saying, well, Candace, you don't know, he could have had complications from, because that's also the language that these politicians are using. When you see um, language that says a death linked to, or complicated by, or complications from what that should instantly tell you um, is that they're lying, that they're that they're omitting facts, um, that this was not a death that was caused and brought on by coronavirus. Um, case in point, a man died yesterday from leukemia, and he the the headline said died uh, from coronavirus. He had he had stage four leukemia. That is pointedly ridiculous. You would never ever ever do that for any other death. So I had posted on my Facebook um, about this particular incident and posted his tweets and I just said, again, my gut is telling me something is missing. And I was absolutely correct. And I will, I wanna be sensitive um, or, or, or sensitive to what these parents are going through. So I wanna limit the details that I give you here. Um, but I can tell you definitively um, that the infant that died in Hartford, Connecticut died because of a terrible at home tragedy that these parents did not lie about. Um, uh, and the police were called, and as I think people have already um, figured out, the infant was brought to the hospital, um, ha had already succumbed um, to its injuries. Um, and so this was not a case where they ever even needed to test for COVID-19. It was an open and shut case. They knew exactly what happened. Um, and But because of a new process where no matter how someone dies, they are tested for COVID-19. We do this for nothing else, okay? If I if I die today, drop dead of a heart attack or an asthma attack, I have asthma there and they know that I had an asthma attack, they are going to test me for COVID-19 and they are going to say that was a COVID-19 death. This is what happened with this infant. Um, to give you an example of the t like a type of tragedy that would fall into the same context of how this infant died um, horribly and tragically, it would be akin to saying, um, that a toddler wandered outside to a pool um, and fell into the pool uh, and drowned uh, on, on its parents watch a total horrible tragic accident that does happen often in this country um, it was akin to that it, they knew exactly how this infant died um, and it is pointedly ridiculous that Ned Lamont, having known exactly how this infant died, again, I am not saying the exact manner that this, this infant died because I just want um, to allow the parents if they want to come out with that. I think the information will eventually come out anyways because as I said, uh, people can file a, a FOIA request and get the same information. Um, but rather than tell parents that, hey, you know, I just wanted you to know that this horrible tragedy happened. And by the way, in post-testing, we determined that he had COVID-19. So yes, um, they can get COVID-19. He didn't do that. He left out the tragic accident. He didn't tell anyone how the infant died. And he, he said that the, in, the incident was linked to COVID-19, which naturally made every single mother in this country freak out. Listen to this. Like, I mean, just just really take a second to pause and listen um, to to what the chatter was in the nation after this. Um, how fearful parents became. Think about the fact that at this moment, the Democrat politicians are now attacking the most vulnerable people in this country. That that is an attack on the most vulnerable people in this country, new mothers and mothers to be. Right. He wanted to to make them feel worry. He wanted to make them freak out. He wanted to have them be emotional and then say, oh my God, oh my God, we need to shut down the nation, shut down the country more. That is what he was going for. And he wasn't going for that because he cared about infants. He knew that this infant death had nothing to do with COVID-19, despite the fact that the infant may have had the virus in its body. He knew the virus was harmless in regards to this infant. He knew, okay? But he lied. 
He lied and he went out and he and he he extracted all of the facts around the case and just told about the diagnosis of of COVID nineteen post mortem, um, and the reason for that is simple. It's because he wanted to freak out not the parents but the federal government. He wanted to say, look at what Connecticut is going through. We're facing a crisis, and the crisis is now so bad, and the people are now so scared um, that infants are dying. So we're going to need even more money because we're going to keep Connecticut shut down. And that's exactly what he did, okay? This is exactly what the Democrats are doing. The big question that we all have to ask, our, ask ourselves now, now that we know that this is true, now that we know that this infant died from a horrible at-home tragedy, and that had nothing to do with COVID-19, we have to ask ourselves how many other deaths were like this? How many other infants died from something that had nothing to do with COVID-19? How many other children have died from nothing that had nothing, had nothing to do with COVID-19? Um, and yet their deaths are being reported um, because of governors like Ned Lamont, who are just trying to extract wealth from the federal government. He was willing to freak out every mother, every parent, in the entire nation, right, about this death so that he could get more money for his state, which is on facing a financial crisis. And it is facing a financial crisis because of leadership. Connecticut is going bankrupt because of Democrats, because they've chased out the rich people, because GE left, because Aetna left, because the wealthy people have left, because they're tired of paying for welfare programs and paying high taxes, right? So he is using coronavirus as a money grab. And in this circumstance, he used a horrible tragedy a horrible at-home incident to do it. This is something that, in my opinion, um, you know, Governor Ned Lamont should be asked to step down. I think he should go to prison, personally. I, I don't think it's enough to step down. I don't think you get to cause mass hysteria like that. If someone can go to prison for yelling fire in a movie theater, Ned Lamont should have to go to prison for spreading mass hysteria and panic amongst parents by omitting the facts around this case. Um, I am calling for everybody who lives in the state of Connecticut and beyond it to pick up the phone and call his office to contact your local news people and tell them to investigate everything that I've just said. My story will check out because I have no reason to lie. I, I knew something was up in these in these um, countries. I'm, I'm sorry, pardon, in these states um, that were run by Democrats that were suddenly having all of these out coronavirus deaths. I knew that the testing had changed, that the CDC had changed the requirements, and I knew that they were now doing post-mortem testing um, to fluff up the numbers, even if they knew how the person had died. Um, with this information, I hope that uh, people in the nation will start to investigate um, what is actually behind these deaths, start to listen to the many families that have come out and said that their loved ones are not dying from coronavirus, and start putting pressure on your local journalists to do their job, because this isn't my job. I shouldn't be the person that's breaking these stories. I shouldn't be the person that is 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 pursuing this knowledge when a bunch of mothers have been lied to. Um, that we have a lot of people um, that should be on the front lines of this, not Candace Owens and her Facebook and Twitter pages. Um, so uh, thank you guys uh, for bearing with me as I have been investigating uh, this COVID-19 crisis. And the answer is always the same, unfortunately. Um, the answer is always politicians and money. If you have any questions or comments, leave it below. Um, uh, definitely go after Governor, Governor Lamont's office and um, demand answers.